as it relates to aging, the turnover of aging tissue and just the requirements and the needs change. And we're not just talking about muscle tissue, are we? Yeah. Actually, when I first got into research, the very first research project I ever worked on was looking at the process of aging in liver. Uh, and what we found was that the messenger RNA, these little RNAs that lead to protein synthesis, changed as we, got a as we aged. The length of those RNAs changed and became less functional. And that kind of got me started on it. And you know, I think one of the things that people don't appreciate, we talk about protein and protein synthesis, is our bodies are required to make 250 to 300 grams of new protein every day. You think about, well, gee, I eat 100 grams, or I eat 150. We've got to make 300. Mm -hmm. And that's that process of protein turnover. And what we've learned is as we get, eat, as we get older, the process of doing that becomes less efficient. We call it anabolic resistance. Right. We're less and less able to make those 250 grams of protein we need. Mm -hmm. So as it relates to making it, what do we know that can be done? Yeah, the, you know, I think trying to understand that is, is interesting. And I, I always like to think about it as different tissues. Um, the liver, for example, is a tissue that in the middle of the night when you're sleeping and fasting, it still has to be doing its work. If it's not making new enzymes and regulating your blood, you die. So whether you're starving or fasting or sleeping, the liver's still doing its thing and still needing new protein. Muscle, on the other hand, which makes up over 50% of your body protein, only gets about 25% of your daily protein synthesis. And it is very meal sensitive. Where liver, like I said, in the middle of fasting, it's still working. About two thirds, almost 75% of your daily protein synthesis goes to your liver and your organs and your gut, where the, you know, only 25% to muscle. And it's much harder to do. And it turns out that it's very meal sensitive. Right. Um, so that's interesting. And I don't, you know, that makes me think, and, and I don't actually know this answer. If, you know, there's anabolic resistance in aging as it relates to skeletal muscle. Um, I wonder how that relates to mTOR and other tissues. Yeah, it's, it's interesting because each of the tissues has different requirements. They're regulated in different ways. And so the liver, which I just said has these requirements is regulated by what's known as initiation factor two, which is energy related uh, regulation. And so it kind of always runs, even it may slow down a little in starvation, but it always runs. Where mTOR, which is related more to muscle, uh, it has multiple signals. It senses uh, energy in the form of an enzyme known as AMB kinase. Mm -hmm. It senses protein in the form of amino acid leucine. Uh, it senses carbohydrates and insulin as a growth hormone. And it senses exercise, physical activity in an enzyme known as RED1. And so it integrates four different signals. And when all of those are correctly balanced, it triggers. And what we know is with the aging process, all of that trigger become less sensitive. It becomes less sensitive, particularly to hormones and more sensitive to the protein and exercise parts. Mm -hmm. And so as we get older, we have to kind of rebalance that to keep our muscles functionally healthy. So that makes a lot of sense. And I know it's gonna be really helpful for people. So really it's about high quality protein and managing the carbohydrates really as we age for optimal health through the life cycle, really. Yeah, when we're young, insulin, growth hormones, really kind of drive that mTOR process because we're growing. Uh, as we get older, those hormones really aren't growth hormones anymore. And well, now they grow your waistline. They, they can grow your, <laughs> the, the carbohydrates certainly can, <laughs> the calories can. Uh, we switch more to the importance of, of the protein 
and the exercise. And as you mentioned, the protein quality, we need more essential amino acids the older we get. We, we don't just need total protein, we have to have essential amino acid rich protein because we want to turn that system on quicker. Hmm. I think that that's all really, really valuable. Yeah, so I, I, you know, I, think, I think that's, you know, people get confused with growth and protein Maximum growth hypertrophy, whether you're a 16 year old or you're a bodybuilder, you're only putting down about five grams of new protein per day, mm -hmm. but yet the body, just to keep itself healthy, has to build 250 to 300, depending on your body size. I mean, those are enormously different numbers. You know, people right. think, well, children need protein, but frankly, adults, because of the anabolic resistance, are far more sensitive to protein than even children. I mean, that, it's just, it's so interesting. So probably the worst piece of advice anyone could be given is to further reduce protein intake, especially as they age. Yeah, I, I think the research is absolutely clear on that, that we have to have more protein or at the very least much higher quality protein as we get older to keep our muscles healthy. Yeah, and it was interesting. I was looking at some of the data and they talk about how the need for fiber actually decreases as individuals age, but it wasn't because they need less fiber. It was just simply because they're having less calories. That there's oh, yeah. a, and, and yeah. I thought that was just interesting. Um, yeah. I, I've always found the idea that fiber relates to calories is something that doesn't quite make sense to me. It seems like it ought to be a certain amount in terms of gut health, but the actual dietary requirement is uh, 15 grams per thousand calories, which I find kind of an interesting requirement. Um, yeah, I do too. And uh, some of the other things that I was reading as, as it relates to aging. And listen, there's all kinds of physiological changes as it relates to the pancreas and teeth, dentition, purely dentition, gut health, microbiome, uh, yeah. you know, lots of things change. And then of course, if you have comorbidities like diabetes, then you have delayed gastric emptying. There's a whole sequelae of things that, that can happen. Um, you know, and arguably keeping amino acids and high quality protein is so important just as it relates to B12, zinc, iron, selenium. Um, these, the more nutrient dense foods, the better, because really in, as individuals age, they're eating less. Yeah. I mean, all of the functions of the body relate to the proteins in the body. And you know, I think one of the fascinating things is that, you know, out of the whatever 100,000 proteins we have in the body, they all turn over at different rates. They all have different lifespans. And we have some proteins that we replace every hour. And then we have structural proteins that might last four months. And the body has to be able to continuously replace these at the right rate in every organ, more muscle, connective tissue, whatever. And that's part of the aging process. Can we continuously and efficiently do that? Well, I mean, we're doing it as best as possible, I would say, and, and truly, um, you know, it's, it's the key to aging and, and truly the organ of longevity is muscle. Yeah, and I think that's, you know, as we've talked, before, you know, the, the two most important things you can keep doing are physical activity, exercise, resistance exercise, and the quality of protein in your diet. Those are the two most consistent things you can do for that protein aging process.